Sometimes life as an amputee is depressing. Sometimes when you see a day in the life of an amputee, you see a lot of the good things. Like this cat. <coughs> Usually the camera doesn't get pulled out on bad days. But today I'm making an exception. Because today was not a fun day. And I shall be filming this entire video flat on my back because reasons. Sitting doesn't work anymore. Which is awkward because I live in a wheelchair. A year and a half ago when my leg was amputated, I kind of expected I'd recover and I'd start regaining some sort of normalcy. Kind of a new normal, but still normal, whatever that is. Except I didn't. When I was learning to walk, my foot broke. And I thought that was pretty pathetic. I mean, you only have one foot and it breaks. But I kept busy and got through it and then started learning to walk again and my foot broke again. Like, that's weird. Unlucky, I guess. So, waited for it to heal and a disease set in. There are videos if you want all the details, but basically life did not go according to plan and that can be discouraging. So, I thought it was pretty pathetic when I had a broken foot. Turns out, I found a way to make it even more pathetic. Stubby got hurt the same day that my foot got hurt. So it's been very painful even just bending my amputated leg. There's a bit of a lump there. If you want details, let me know, otherwise I won't bog you down with them. But my amputated leg had been showing some signs of struggling for a while. And then everything hit the fan on the same day. That leg got hurt and my foot got hurt within hours of each other. And then I suddenly realized how much I relied on my amputated leg when my foot's broken. In the past, to take weight off my broken foot, I would kind of kneel on my wheelchair with my amputated side if I had to get in and out of a car or in and out of bed, stuff like that. Turns out if your half calf is also injured and bending and putting pressure on it isn't working, it's a lot harder to get in and out of the car, in and out of bed, using the bathroom, all that ordinary stuff. And it hurts. So suddenly I was feeling even more disabled than usual. So I went from trying so hard to rehabilitate my body, build up some muscle, work on the atrophy, you know, just try to get my body healthy. And then in a moment, just like that, suddenly I'm worse off than I was before. And I'm looking back fondly on how I was a week or two ago. So that was very discouraging. And I thought, okay, well, at least I'm a pro at living life in a wheelchair. But this time there's a problem. After a few days of being in a wheelchair again, my back went from having severe problems to, uh-oh, we have an urgent situation here. Which is not the direction I was aiming to go in. It got so bad so quickly, I couldn't sit up even to eat. And it turns out it's really hard to eat when you're flat on your back. And when I say flat on my back, I mean like not even a pillow. I've been flat on my back for days now. I'm a very independent person who is notorious for pushing through pain a little too much. And so to be in a position where I couldn't even get myself to the bathroom is very humbling and discouraging because there are things I want to do. I want to live again. I want to play with my kids. Like, I want to be able to reach the washer and dryer and get my laundry done. Just simple things. And I can't. So anyhow, I went to some appointments where it became increasingly apparent that what I'm experiencing is not even close to normal. Not even for an amputee, not even for someone who's been in a wheelchair a couple of years. Something is weird and we don't know what it is. So my doctor's working on getting me in with specialists in this amazing hospital about 100 miles away. And he wants to assemble a team of specialists because his gut feeling is there's something abnormal in the mix and we need to figure out what it is because I keep breaking. And in the meantime, I'm pretty completely disabled. 
So last week I was thinking like, yikes, my back stayed worse by the day. Sunday night I was like, okay, I need a game plan for surviving the week because obviously I can't be in the wheelchair. My back is not working. I need help until we figure out what's going on. How am I going to reach the kitchen and get food while my husband's at work? How am I going to take care of my four-year-old? How am I going to take care of like, you know, work and business, like all of my many responsibilities. How am I going to take care of stuff? And genius that I am, I'm like, I'll just kind of scoot on my belly. I mean, I can't army crawl because, you know, my legs are injured, but I'm like, maybe I can just like belly scoot and use my arms. <laughs> so the next morning I wake up, I could barely move. I'm like, okay, I guess we're not belly scooting. Like, what do you do? Like, literally, I could not even get myself to the bathroom. And turns out there's a reason for that. Trying to get in to get help that day was both excruciating and difficult. And they looked at my back and they said it felt like it had been turned to wood. The muscles were so seized up that no wonder I couldn't move to sit up. And whew, that was painful. After um, a bit of torture, lots of needles and treatment. They got me to where I can sit for short periods of time, but basically I'm still flat on my back except when I have to get in the car to go to an appointment or like tonight I had to go to my son's high school orientation thing. I don't feel old enough to have a high schooler, but anyhow tonight was the high school orientation and while we were there, they had a basketball game going on. So we went in there to watch it. It brought back so many emotions from my childhood. You may not know this, but I spent most of my childhood deathly ill. And I won't get into all of the details on that, but like, I didn't expect to survive my childhood. I really did not. It was very isolating. I didn't make it to school very often. I did most of my schoolwork from home. And none of my peers had any clue of what I was going through. I mean, like, they knew that I was sick, but how can you relate to that? Especially when, like, you're a teenager, you haven't had that life experience. So I was going through life and death struggles, and they're figuring out who to go to prom with. And I felt so isolated and alone. And I also felt like I couldn't be myself because the person inside is very athletic, very energetic, definitely a workaholic. And I was struggling just to survive. I was stuck in bed, not knowing if I'd be alive the next day. I feel like we understood part of the problem at the time, but we never did fully understand why it was so severe. And a lot, it was mostly breathing. I was not good at breathing. Kind of an important skill. And I would stop breathing multiple times a week. Like not just, oh, it's a little hard to breathe, but like there is no air. I remember being so tired because it's exhausting when you completely lose air and your body starts to shut down and get revived. And you know, it just is so hard on the body. It felt like I'd never get out. So I spent most of my childhood in profound isolation, deathly ill, unable to do normal childhood activities like go to school. I didn't get to play with friends much. Like it's hard to even make friends if you're not there. <laughs> I really, really wanted to do martial arts. And I really, really wanted to play basketball and soccer. Those were the three things, martial arts, basketball, and soccer. I just wanted to run. I remember looking out the window and I could see other kids play. I never got to, except for my very early childhood. I'd never been able to run. 
It wasn't until I was 17 that my breathing improved to the point where I could actually do anything. I still remember the first time I ran. It was incredible. I had spent my whole childhood dreaming of what it would be like to run. And I finally got to run. And I wasn't very good at it because like years of being deathly ill doesn't make you a great athlete, but it was so incredible. So give me an inch, I'm taking a mile, kind of literally in this case. So I started working really hard to improve my cardio and my breathing in general through exercise and got to thoroughly enjoy all the things I'd watched from the other side of the window. And it was amazing. Martial arts, sheer bliss. I started with Aikido and a decade or so later, I added on Taekwondo and oh man, I got to do the things I'd always wanted to do. Apparently very violent things, but they were so fun. But anyhow, tonight and seeing all these teenagers jumping and running and leaping and twisting and turning, falling down, getting back up. I felt like a tangible desire to jump up and start running. I felt desperate to get up and start running, but it's physically impossible right now. And it was very mesmerizing and difficult at the same time to watch because of how much I miss being able to walk outside. I miss running. I used to bike 80 miles a week. I never used my car. I'd just haul my kids around in a bike trailer to school, grocery shopping, everything. I got a black belt in Aikido and I was working towards one in Taekwondo. Made it to brown belt when my leg got crippled and now I never know if I'll get my Taekwondo black belt. I remember when I started Taekwondo for the warm-ups because we'd run laps around uh, the studio and I would always just like take off full sprint as fast as I possibly could. I remember somebody saying to me like, you know, you don't have to do like a full sprint. Like this is a warm up. You can kind of just loosen up, jog. And I remember saying something to the effect of like, I couldn't run as a child. And so now when I run, I feel free. And I never know when I could lose that. For all I know, tomorrow I could be hit by a car and end up in a wheelchair and never be able to run again. So since I'm capable of running today, I'm running, not half-heartedly. I'm running with all I've got. And I did. I'm so grateful looking back. I don't have regret. I did not waste a day. I truly valued the time that I had and viewed it as a gift from God. It was precious to me. Like even when I broke both hands at the same time, I still kept going to martial arts and I just kicked the tar out of Bob. It was it, it was fun kicking Bob. I didn't know how short it would be. I thought I'd have more time. I don't even know if I'll be able to ever train again. It's always been my default assumption that of course I'm going back to all of my martial arts. I love martial arts. Of course I'm going to bike again, but I keep fighting so hard and more and more time passes. And I'm more disabled today than I was a week ago. And I'm discouraged. It's discouraging to regress when you're trying to progress. It's discouraging when you're trying to, you know, get back on two feet after amputation, but you can't, like, 
I was working on building up muscle mass, getting my body healthy, and I was doing some fun stuff I was excited to tell you guys about. I was learning to roll on my prosthesis and uh, a whole bunch of other fun stuff. And now everything's taken an abrupt nosedive. And I'm so grateful that I didn't wait for things to be perfect before trying to live. I didn't waste the time that I had. And I'm not saying this is permanent. I have no clue what's going on with my body right now. But I know that right now I am extremely disabled even relative to being an amputee. Welcome back, cat, of your fluffy face. So grateful I didn't waste the time that I had, but, but that doesn't mean I don't get discouraged or depressed. And something I worry about is because you so often see me being cheerful that maybe, cat, that maybe you think So sometimes I worry that because you see me cheerful so often, that maybe you might feel down on yourself if you're not cheerful. But honestly, I think that's normal, especially if you're facing things like amputation. And the fact is my personality's just kind of upbeat, but that doesn't mean I'm not depressed. It just means it's harder for people to see when I'm depressed. It's normal to struggle. And that's why I turned on the camera because I want you to see that I struggle too. I'm not, always okay i'm always cracking puns but i'm not always satisfied with where my life is at i'm not always feeling cheerful i get discouraged i feel depressed and i'm in pain physically emotionally and that's part of life we each have our own strengths and weaknesses like my strength is probably making corny jokes you know that's all I've got to offer. Like my friend One Footed Phoenix is so much better than I am at showing the behind the scenes struggles that go along with amputation and chronic pain. And I really admire Asayuki, the double amputee for her work with disability awareness and promoting accessibility. But we all have our own strengths and weaknesses. And sometimes I fear that just because my personality happens to be this way, it gives a mistaken impression that I'm not depressed when in fact, yeah. How could you not lose a limb and feel depressed? Like you've experienced a major loss and even though no body parts have fallen off this month, I've lost a lot of freedom. I've lost my independence and instead I'm in a lot more pain and uncertainty and discouragement. And I think there's value in being open about that. Uncertainty is very hard to deal with. I experienced a lot of it before the decision to amputate, and I'd imagine a lot of you watching have experienced this too. It's, for me, at least a lot easier once I know what's going to happen and have an idea of what the prognosis is. I'm like, okay, let's make a game plan and deal with it. But when you don't know what your prognosis is, you don't know what even the problem is, it's scary and you don't know how to adapt because you don't know what you need to adapt to. And you just find yourself waiting instead of living, just waiting to find out what to do next, waiting for the next MRI, waiting for the next doctor's appointment because you don't want to risk making things worse, but you don't know how to make them better. And that's where I'm at right now. So sorry if I'm rambling. I don't do well just talking at a camera, but I couldn't sit up to type out what I was feeling. So this is what you get, people. I'm, you know, I'm having a moment. But all that being said, if I could go back in time and change the direction my life has taken, I wouldn't. For example, when my remaining foot got diseased, if that hadn't happened, then my doctor never would have gotten set up to give infusions to people with CRPS. And now he's able to do that and he's amazing. And I'm just grateful that I can point people in his direction. And every time someone messages me to ask me who to go to, I feel so deeply grateful for what happened to me because it's like, my suffering 
made it so other people could get out. Right? If nothing had gone wrong for me, then things wouldn't have started going right for all these other patients who are now getting help. And that's just so humbling and fills my heart with gratitude. I wouldn't change it if I could. If I could go back in time and save my leg, I'd let it go. Because beautiful things have happened in my life and other people's lives as a direct result of tragedy. And I don't want to give that up. If anything, I think the challenges have made it better, richer, deeper, and more meaningful. I believe that sorrow gives meaning to joy, that loss can expand our capacity for gratitude. If I'd had a normal childhood, I never would have experienced the deep, rich, exhilaration and gratitude for something as simple as being able to run. So it seems very probable to me that my experiences now can prepare me for greater joy and deeper meaning in my life in the future, even if it's hard to see today. I don't know what it'll look like and I certainly don't expect my life to ever be easy. Like my track record is terrible, but it can be beautiful. And it'll mean more because of the challenges. I'm in a lot of pain right now. But that doesn't mean that there isn't hope of a glorious tomorrow. I don't know you as well as I'd like, but I'm sure you're going through something hard. Whatever it is, have hope. Don't give up. There's goodness inside you and the potential for joy no matter what your struggle is. No matter what you've done or where you've been, there's always the promise of tomorrow. Not the promise that the promise will go away. Don't hold your breath for that. But I do have faith in human nature that those who decide to make the best of whatever life throws at them can make beautiful, meaningful, and joyful lives regardless of what happens to them. So whatever you're going through, don't give up. Have hope. There are better days ahead, even if it doesn't feel like it. Hang in there. You'll be all right. And I really admire Asayuki, the double amputee, for her work with disability awareness and promoting accessibility.